Have you heard of React Server Component? It's a newer type of component rendering that started from the React community. Now, Nuxt.js has its own version of Server Component. The significant aspect of Server Component is its server-only rendering capability. It doesn't require any client-side rendering, eliminating the need for hydration. Hydration refers to the process of rendering JavaScript components on the client side, as it involves loading and executing code. Hydration can significantly impact the initial load performance of a server-side rendered web page. Server component is all about reducing the need for hydration. It will only send the rendered HTML to the client. The source code of that component is not needed on the client side. As of Nux version 3.11, it's still an experimental feature, but we can try it out and see what it's all about. To use this feature, there's no need to change your code. Just add the extension dot server before the dot view extension. You can add the extension to any component or page component that you want to render only on the server. And by the way, if you want to follow along, you can clone this sample project here. It's from a course on view mastery. It has many branches. The one that I'm using is L6 Ant. Now let's talk about pros and cons. The good thing is that the page will now load faster without an additional hydration step on the front end. If you want some proof of this, you can measure the performance of the initial load using the dev tools. Click record here. Now that it's recording, we can refresh the page, wait a little bit, and then stop the recording. Here's the result. And here's the before and after comparison. You can ignore idle and total here. They are not relevant. Look at the scripting part. That's where the hydration takes place. Since there's no hydration with server only rendering, there's less scripting needed to be done while loading the page. Additionally, the source code of the page component will only run on a server, meaning that all related dependencies will also remain there. This includes any sensitive logic, like fetching calls to an API server that should be kept private. As long as these are not used in other regular components, they too will stay on a server. But a trade-off is that a server-only component can't be interactive because they are no longer view components on the client side. They are just a bunch of HTML at that point. In practice, we would have to mix and match different types of components to get the desired results. When server component becomes a stable feature, an intuitive method should be available to mark a nested component as interactive. This would allow you to render a page as server only while also having the ability to nest interactive components within the page rendered with classic SSR or client only. This is a top-down approach. Alternatively, the page can be rendered using traditional SSR where you can selectively choose which nested components to render in server-only mode. Simply add the .server extension to the components you want to render as server-only. This is the bottom-up approach. The top-down approach is great for pages with mostly static content, but there's a bit of interactive UI. The bottom-up approach is more suitable when the page frame is highly interactive but contains a large section of static content. For example, the main body of a blog article usually displays a significant amount of static content. As of 3.11.2, this feature is still under development, so the final developer experience remains uncertain. However, the server-only component feature is built on the Nux Island component, the DX of using Nux Island is more defined, so we'll discuss that next. Instead of making an entire component server only, we can render a specific component in the template server only by using the Nux Island component. For example, this component is rendering some markdown content using a component called render markdown. We can render it in the server only mode through Nux Island. We need to set the name of the component that we want to render. In this case, we want to render the render markdown component. And then set the props that we want to pass into the render markdown component. Render markdown has to have the .island.view extension for this to work. 
This approach is more flexible because the rendering of a component is more related to the context in which the component is used rather than the component itself. In this example, the prop post content doesn't get changed like a state does. So rendering it in server only would improve performance without sacrificing the functionality of the page. However, there might be another scenario where we use render markdown and the prop path to it is supposed to be reactive. In such cases, rendering render markdown server only may not be optimal. The reactivity of the prop would trigger the server only component to render again on the server over the network and have its HTML sent to the client also over the network. This could actually result in a degraded performance. So with Nux Island, you have the freedom to choose how components should be rendered when you're using it, not when you created it. At the time of this recording, server component is still an experimental feature, but maybe you're watching this in the future and it's already part of Nux 4. Even without server component, you can still optimize the performance of your site by utilizing the various rendering modes currently available in Nux.js. You can check out the real-world Nux 3 course on Viewmastery to learn all about that.